All right, broski, it's T, and I'm back, man, and I have a little time, so I figured oh, I'll make this video because I saw a bit of it. It's Greg Doucette. Kind of popped up. It says, stumped. The hardest question I have ever had to answer. I don't think it's that hard for him, but okay, let's listen to this. And so Connor Murphy, he calls me out. He goes up to me at the Mr. Olympia and asks me one of the most difficult questions I've ever been asked. It is a very hard question. Okay. What is this hard question? And so let's hear the question and see how we can answer this. All right, Coach Craig, you're ready for one of the hardest I'm questions ready. in the hardest fitness question. of all time. Let's yeah. see. What distinguishes a natural supplement from an unnatural supplement? It is a very hard question. No supplement is natural. There's no such thing as a natural supplement, man. They're manufactured in a laboratory, therefore they're synth synthetically manufactured in a laboratory, and if they're synthetic, they're unnatural. They're naturally unnatural, they're artificial. Um, I'm not really sure how to answer that question. I would say that if it's something that gives you a performance enhancing edge that, that WADA deems to be not natural, that it's not natural, but to be honest... Ah, okay, so he's talking about that kind of a natural su uh, supplement and natural supplement. Ah, that kind. He could have just said steroids, man. He had me confused. <laughs> okay, yeah. A natural, what WADA deems... Uh, an enhanced performing drug. Okay, that's WADA, but we're not we're not competing in Olympics. So what the fuck do we give a shit about WADA? This, why does that really matter? It's what you think. So I have my own personal opinion. Yeah, exactly. What does it matter? It's what you think because the rules only apply to people that are competing in that sport that's regulated by WADA. But you in the not in this artificial world, you live in the city. <laughs> does it really matter? Does it really matter? Of what it is to be natural, and it can be different from everyone else. There is no right or wrong answer. I want everyone to understand that it's up to the individual to decide what in their mind is natural versus... I think natural is something that you build in nature, in the natural world, not in this artificial world. If you build it naturally, if you do it specifically in the natural world, how it should be built, ultrastructural injuries, they, you cause these ultrastructural injuries, progenitor donates its nuclei, they synthesize protein, and protein synthesis needs to exceed this breakdown, then yes, you can build real muscle, but you can also do it artificially through sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Remember, hypertrophy has many meanings. There's, there's many types of hypertrophy. Blood flow restrictions, hypertrophy muscles, lactic acid, um, inflammation, um, I don't know, sar sarcoplasmic fluid, creatine supplements like creatine stuff, they draw water into the muscle. That is artificial. Let's see, what else is there? There's myofibular growth, there's real stuff. So there's artificial, then there's real stuff like these ultrastructural injuries, the fiber splitting and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That too, that, that hypertrophies. If, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you get body fat, you hypertrophy too through body fat. You get bigger. Triglyceride, yeah. So there's all kinds of ways to hype the body for to hypertrophy. Can your bones get slightly bigger too? Yeah, is that a type of hypertrophy? Yes. Can you visually see it? I don't know, not really particularly. You wouldn't be able to see it. There's not that much bone that's going to get that much bigger. But hey, it can hypertrophy. That doesn't mean it doesn't, even if there's a slight, a slight amount there. Enhanced. And now for me, I deem being natural to be anyone that's playing by the rules, so to speak. They're not taking anything that's banned by water. When you go into a drug-tested sporting competition, they've decided that there's certain... Oh, I would have to agree. Anything, I just, I don't agree with that. Yes, maybe the water stuff, yes. But I believe anything that you do to create muscles artificially, you're, it's, it's fake, okay? That's all. It's fake. It's unnatural. Things that are allowed and certain things that are not allowed. Look, if you're eating, like, if you're eating carbohydrates, which isn't your natural diet because you're a carnivore, and you can't turn... Carbohydrates don't, don't create muscle. <laughs> they create phony muscles. Water, they can draw water in the muscle and create phony muscles. But you can't create muscle like cows can eating grass. So when you eat grass, you don't convert it into um, into muscle. Cows do that. But when you eat it, it draws in as an energy source in your muscles. They just draw it in as glucose, as glycogen. Yeah. And if you take things that are not allowed, you're deemed to be unnatural. If you only take the things.
things that they allow you to take, then you're deemed as being natural. And so for me, that is the easiest way. And so WADA lists out a number of things that are banned. For example, anabolic steroids, SARMs, SERMs, peptides, pro-hormones, stimulants, cannabis, the list goes on and on. And so if you don't take any of those things, then I say you're 100% natural. But there are things on that list that are, in fact, debatable for many people. For example, Alex Eubank right now currently admits to taking BPC-157. He injects it into the shoulder. Is doing isometric, um, these isometrics, is it unnatural? No, it's natural. See what I mean? It's a natural way of getting stronger. Uh, I call that gravitational loading. There's a gravitational loading on the skeletal, which will disrupt the cells. And supposedly the cells will compensate by making them bigger, slightly bigger, and stronger. Um, but again, if there's not enough resources, then they won't get that much bigger and stronger. And then they will not be able to take any more load. See what I mean? They get bigger and stronger when you eat something very specific and then they can take more load. Yeah. And then they can get bigger and stronger again to a certain degree, of course. You can only get so big and so strong to the point where it just ends at some point. But you've never reached that point. That's the problem. And yeah, you just never, none of you are reaching it. You're shooting for the, you're shooting for the stars, but you're not reaching, you're not getting them. <laughs> Older, it's a pet and it speeds the rate of healing and so it, what it does is it increases the blood supply to that injured area and allows it to recover to heal faster than ever before and so because of that water has deemed it to be unnatural here's the problem all of you are trying to obtain something that's unobtainable through your hey look your exercises are not geared towards what you're specifically trying to your goal trying to get what you're trying to get your goals are set for to get that is your problem a lot of people they don't even realize what they're getting it's like he just got bigger he ate this and he got bigger he did this he got he got this or he got that or i got a stronger lift but i, I didn't get i got bigger but i didn't get stronger or i got a stronger but i didn't get bigger or whatever vice versa blah because all of you don't even know what the hell you're training for what you're doing <laughs> you're all you're like fucking you're gone man it's it's crazy you don't even know how to eat properly you don't even know that protein synthesis needs to exceed this breakdown you have to get over a domain limit to get more of these progenitor cells to continuously grow da, da, da. you're like skating uphill and going back to homostasis your body consistently wants to return back to homostasis that's why i say gravitational loading and unloading inflammation it goes back to homostasis that's why you have to keep up with the inflammation in the gym your phony muscles sarcoplasmic the same thing it got a it got a loads in there you know that keeps loading and loading you can keep loading it by eating it but at some point it'll you know hey it's not healthy for you but the, but real muscle and, re, and certain things always want to return to homostasis yeah but glycogen that is an energy source so yeah you're just loading energy in the muscle not necessarily your body is going to return to homostasis where we have to drain this energy you're the one that stuck it in there to begin with you drain it does it in fact give you a performance enhancing effect well i don't really think so but in a way it does because if you're injured and you can't heal you i love this enhanced performing effect then he says injured so what what is it is it enhanced performing or does it fix injuries or does it build muscle what does it do it doesn't build muscle and it doesn't peptides may heal you because they're, ba they're based on growth hormone uh, peptides to heal specific injuries and stuff. Okay, they may help, yeah, definitely. Do they build muscle? Nope, they don't build muscle. Um, let me see. Will they build artificial muscles? They could aid in that. Yeah, sure. You can't train as hard, and so you're not going to get the same results. But do we really want to <laughs> tell people you can't use peptides, that you can't heal yourself from an injury? Is that really fair? Well, according to WADA, they're saying, yeah, that is fair. Man, if he uses a peptide and he injures his arm, he injured his arm, he uses a peptide and he heals it. And then he doesn't use it anymore. What are you talking about? How is this him being unnatural, natural, natural? People use all kinds of drugs to heal themselves in a short period of time. And then they don't, they discontinue it. It's not something they're doing forever. Shit. And so I have to go with that. There are 
things in life that you don't always like, but you have to play by the rules. For example, when I'm driving on the highway and the speed limit says 100 and I'm driving the McLaren, I feel like going 150, but I can't. I have to follow the rules. Oh, brother. For physiological levels, you know, it's like... And so in reality, people are on a spectrum. You're more natural than others. For example, if you take pre-workout, you take lots of caffeine, you smoke marijuana, you take BPC-157, TB-500, you use IVs to increase your blood plasma, or you're getting IV bags, these are deemed banned by WANA. And so you're actually not natural. But for some people, they're going to say, why is that not natural? Who cares? If you smoke a joint, do you really get to get a performance enhancing effect or you actually going to sprint faster lift heavier weights because you're taking an edible before bed to help you sleep and what if you're taking sleeping pills over the counter or drinking five cups of coffee caffeine is a drug it's a strong man you're living an artificial lifestyle working an artificial job eating artificial food just everything artificial wearing a bunch of artificial stuff doing weird artificial things so what does it really matter whether you do this or not it's you're already artificially creating artificial muscles doing all kinds of weird shit cosmetic artificial look and things and sutures and things for the hair and skin and this and that putting in artificial teeth you got all kinds of artificial teeth and this and that artificial nails fuck it man it goes on forever bro it just it never ends you know and so should that not be banned? And why is it that you're allowed to get drunk? How come you can get drunk? Alcohol's a drug. How come we're allowed to use alcohol and we can't use marijuana? Who makes the rules? They're both legal in Canada, so why can't I take the one that I want? Because alcohol doesn't doesn't enhance your performance, but but marijuana, now that's totally different. See, alcohol is real poison when you drink it. So that's gonna inhibit your, your performance. But marijuana will de-stress you. Definitely, it's a de-stressing drug. Definitely, make you perform much better under stress. So you're on TRT, right? Yes. Well, what are your levels? Norm and if you're stressed, you'll release a catabolic hormone. Look, like, listen to this. If you're stressed, you'll release a catabolic hormone. The catabolic hormone will be will accumulate if you're stressed. That means more breakdown. Stress causes the catabolic hormone to go up. That will cause your testosterone to go down. See what I mean? Now, if protein synthesis exceeds that breakdown, the catabolic hormone is shut off. So even if you were to be stressed, but, 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 but protein synthesis exceeds that breakdown, then you will convert those, those catabolic hormones to an androgen so it doesn't have to compete with the myositic androgen receptor giving you more hormones. It's somewhat like an anabolic effect of, of, of um, hormones. That's what they do. They, they say the more stressed you are on a hormone, the more it will suppress it. The more it will suppress it. But it, it, it's the reverse in natural people. When you eat this protein, blah, 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 it suppresses, boom, it'll convert it into more androgens, giving you more force production, more this, more that. Yeah, a bunch of stuff, okay? Normally. was seven something it's usually in the 700s this one was a little bit lower but i did the test on like the fourth day after the injection so it's up or down but like it's it's in a normal range but i'm still not natural because it's testosterone from an exogenous source and so admittedly i'm on hrt but my testosterone levels are within the reference range and so am i actually natural because i'm only replacing what man these people love to talk about stupid shit drugs and everything because they're so fucking lazy man they don't want to go out there and do it real they're lazy i gotta do an easy take an injection i gotta create a fake artificial look a cosmetic you know, I'm building a muscle. I'm building a muscle. Yeah, what are you building? Nothing. You built nothing. Fake. When one guy says to me, hey, I'm IFBB. What are you talking about? Oh, this guy says fake. It is fake. What are you talking about? It is fake. You're too stupid to understand what the fuck fake is, man. That's the fucking problem. My body should be making. Does that mean I'm natural? I'm saying no, not even close, not at all. Other people are saying, yeah, if you take testosterone and it's prescribed by a doctor, I have a prescription. It's legal. I'm supposed to take it. But to me, that's still giving me an edge. It's giving me an edge over what other people are doing. But what about creatine? I literally have it in the back. Creatine is found in nature, and if you take it, according to a thousand plus studies, it has been shown to work. And so, am I in fact natural if I'm taking creatine? Well, it depends.
again, some people are going to say yes, some people are going to say no. Thousand years ago, couldn't get creatine in a bottle. I couldn't get the various ectosteroids and ectibuilder, and there was no animan in sufficient quantities that are seen in Geo2 Max. And so, how can I get the performance enhancing effects of these products? But yet, these, they're not banned. And so, you can take these and you can still claim to be natural. But are you really? Are you really? Ask yourself. If you had been alive a thousand years ago, there's no way you could have got the performance enhancing effects of these as well as creatine in pre workouts. And so, are you in fact natural? And so, I ask you, what does it mean to you to be natural? I think to be natural, it's up to the person. But if you're competing in drug distance sports, then you have to at least obey and play by the rules. Yeah, that's interesting because I'm. Yeah, that's if you're competing. These people are not competing. So, why the fuck do they care, bro? Well, I'm not on TRT. I take testosterone boosters, but mine's around 700, so... What? I, I just, I don't believe him, man. He takes one. Testosterone boosters, they don't work, man. This is bullshit. I don't know what he's talking about. He's with Tony Huge right now. He's been hanging out with him for quite a while. He put him on steroids. He said that. So what is he talking Similar about? Similar to mine. And so my opinion, if you take test boosters, Lying. then you're still natural. But why? They don't work. Are. But according to some people, they're going to say, no, anything you take. But where do he's lying years ago? And so imagine if Wada suddenly he's lying. He's not on test boosters. He's on a testosterone. He's he says not. And he's on real test. Yeah, man, it's too good. You can't say if something boosts you beyond <laughs> the natural limit. I don't think that's fair because some people. What's going to boost you beyond natural limit? Not these stupid supplements, the fake ones that don't work. Synthesized in laboratories. They're made not to work. People, genetic outliers. They have genetic. Yeah. It put on fiber. For example, Adderall. I mean, these are certainly giving methods to rehydrate faster than last time. And not only that, there are various vitamins, minerals, compounds you can take intravenously, and that gives you an advantage. Okay, so you put these minerals and vitamins. Are they illegal to do that? No, of course not. It's crap, man. And so I don't think WADA wants all of their athletes to have to go and get IVs every time they go to the gym. Why? You can you can put these minerals and vitamins in you. You want they don't want water. Doesn't want you to do that. What do you mean? You can do whatever you want as long as it's illegal. Hello. Because once you allow it, everyone needs to then do it to keep up with the Joneses. No, not everyone needs to do it. It's just those that want to do it, and that's, they're not. They don't. They don't do anything. These stupid artificial shits that you're injecting in your arm anyway. So to speak, you need to do what the others are doing so that you aren't at a disadvantage. You know, I'm sure that he. <laughs> in the rehydration process, it, you're swallowing a pill exogenously from a. That makes them unnatural. And so Connor has great points. I mean, many things are hormones you're putting in your body and it's making us have benefits. But the difference is, WADA hasn't deemed it to be unnatural. And so what do I think is natural? Well, I'm sticking with WADA. We need to have some rules. We need to have some regulations. If not, anyone could just self-identify as natural. Imagine if it was like in the sporting world. Oh yeah, it's, it's crazy. That's true. The best was they said that they were going to, in the future, they were going to punish people for having new myonuclei, more myonuclei. What's, there's an unnatural process of getting them and an unnatural way of getting them. But I don't believe that the unnatural way how they get them is through, adapt, uh, through another adaptation by moving weight that is extra, uh, horrendously, extraordinarily, super heavy physiologically that apparently they'll say that a natural can't do. But that's not true because when I reached a weight of 285, I could lift and bench super heavy with these ultra-structural muscle injuries getting more of these nuclei because the nuclei, they synthesize protein and the ultra-structural injuries, and this protein synthesis exceeds its breakdown, suppressing the catabolic hormone, converting it into an androgen, does have to compete with myositic androgen receptor, giving you more force production and more strength on top of that. That is a lot of work. That is a lot of money. And if you don't have money, you can't build your body. That's why you have to go through all this cheap shit. But I said, success is a short window. Maybe these people don't have time to do it real. And so they do it fake really quick, and get it over with as quick as possible and then retire. That's about it, basically. Get it? Destroy myself for the short term so for I can have long-term success forever. <laughs> like Greg Doucette. He, he destroyed himself. He goes into this crazy bodybuilding. He's still on drugs, for sure. He's lying to you about TRT. 
all right? So he could sell, you look at his body and you keep watching him and you're imagining crazy things in your head that you're gonna be like him. He's a man lit, he's small, he's nobody, he's nothing. He's selling you his stupid cookbooks and all this shit. And he says, well, I was a teacher, but I, I'm also, I was in bodybuilding, I'd be pro. He sold drugs, sold fake drugs, whatever, got arrested. Now he got a pardon, now he can go to US. And he did all these things. It shows you that being a criminal pays. They say crime doesn't pay. The truth is, crime itself is, you could say it, it itself doesn't pay when you get arrested, but it definitely can, it can pay off. You understand me? In the long run, if you know what you're doing. It worked for Greg. He's a criminal, but he's no longer a criminal. Why? Because they pardoned him. He put in a pardon because he's from Canada. After five years, if you don't commit a crime, you can put in for a pardon. You got a clean record. He made it down for the Olympia. What is he doing that is natural? How is he able to keep this unnatural look? Ask yourself that question. What makes him so special than, than all the other people? You want to know what it is? money and none of you have it and he already has more and more he's accumulating more and more money because you are supporting him and his habits and everything his drug habit you're paying for his drug habit his cars and everything think about it why did his girlfriend leave him why did she leave him huh he's at the peak of his success why would a woman leave the guy if he's at his peak of success right now? He's got the cars, the house, the business, the 5.2.5 million subscribers, blah, blah, blah. Hey, bro, he's got the cookbooks going and the schmook books and the uh, this, that. Why would she leave him at the height of his his career? He's, she, she, he, she can enjoy the fruits of the labor now. Could take go on vacation, go here, go there. He can go to the U.S. now. He's not a criminal anymore, right? He was a criminal. He committed a crime. They caught him with tons of cash, right? Because, see, crime does pay. It's a lie. They lie to you. It's all a lie. Crime does pay in this world if you know what you're doing. See what I mean? He said the best thing that happened to him was him being arrested and him losing his job at the school and now he pursued this and look what it's done for him see what i mean so does crime pay yeah crime pays bro depending on how you how you the crime that you're committing the, the way you're conducting it i know a lot of people that got popular through crimes even this model guy they discovered him and he became a supermodel whatever he was in, in prison or whatever in jail they put out his mugshot there's a bunch of people out there. The people send them letters, this, that. They want to marry these jailbirds and everything because crime pays. <laughs> you understand me? The, and the guy out there who could barely get a woman, yet they're sending in letters to guys that are criminals. Why are women so attracted to these criminals? See what I mean? Why are they attracted to all this shit? But the question is, you still have to ask, why did she leave him? <laughs> That's a good question. See what I mean? He didn't leave her. I'm 100% sure Ali left him. Yeah, but anyways... I'll see you in the next one. Tell you think about that. Like, subscribe, support the channel. The hardest question I've ever, ever, heard, ever answered. Here's the hardest question. Why did she leave him at the height of his popularity career? See you in the next one. Ciao, friends.